We have some retro tech this week. This one's gonna be a little different. We're gonna show off the Apple product that you probably have never heard of and never seen. Um, the reason why I'm gonna show this off this week is because um, there's actually like a beautiful like ebook online. It's um, all the like notes and letters and like things that Steve Jobs put together. They actually spent a big deal on this. I think like um, it's been a multi, multi, multi year effort. Um, to kind of capture the things about Steve Jobs and how Apple came about. However, <laughs> there's a story that's not being told and probably never be told, gonna be told about Apple. Because if you look around, it's like, wow, like Apple's this like pro company. Look at all this slick wow. hardware. It was They're made. So legal. It was made by pirates doing TV be gone stuff and jamming radio waves. And and I think that's something that should be celebrated. Mischief and hacking and electronics. And if you think about it, without that, there wouldn't be an Apple. So however you feel about, you know, big tech companies, uh, Apple in particular was started by a bunch of phone freaking pirates. So this is the um, uh, device. It's the first Apple product. <laughs> they weren't called Apple at the time. Um, but what I wanted to show is these cool uh, baseball light cards. Um, and uh, let me switch to the overhead here. So Lady you could show these off. Um, this is uh, Phone Freaker Cards, uh, Berkeley Blue, also known as Steve Wozniak, and then um, Oaf Tobar, which I can't find why Steve Jobs called himself that. It, it was in one line in one book when I did some research, um, but can't really find out why he chose that. Maybe if I like put this through one of those word things, maybe it spells something else. Or if anyone knows, um, let me know. But flip over to the back. So this is that product. Um, all new for 72. In the spring of 72, uh, technical folks with pseudonym handles took to automating Ma Bell with a handmade gadget that produces tones and frequencies which fool the system to thinking they're the phone company. Now for a little bread, you can have one too. So this made free phone calls. Back when you could do stuff like that. In 1972. Back before, back when it actually meant something. Like now, of course, people are like, what do you mean you pay for a phone call? Why don't you just use, like, Skype or something? It's free. No, yeah. you have to use to pay, like, by the minute. Yeah, so this is uh, the first Apple product you've never heard of. This is how, if you're using a Mac or an iPhone or whatever, this is how it got here. And um, one of the things that I thought that was interesting is there's one clip I found, the only place where... I've heard Steve Jobs talk about his days of uh, piracy. So uh, he was introducing like something in 2006, I think, and uh, the clicker wasn't working. And then he was talking about uh, yeah, just like, I had to kill ja time. jammers. And here's the thing: he's like, you know, like you see this and you're like, wow, this guy's really charismatic. Like he can, he like, he's just like, okay, I'm gonna instantly tell a, like a story. Yeah, and and here's and the thing: story. And here's the thing I like, and I and I like this because we're we're kind of living through our own little version. It's like. You know, we got a lot of shit for TV Be Gone, showing people how to turn TVs on. Oh, I still get like you get a lot of shit for, for the pager stuff. For, for the pager thing, we showed for the your cell phone thesis jammer. was the was the cell phone jammer. But the idea that you can explore technology and understand things and hack them and mod them and share the information—that's how the world's most successful com company got here. Whether you like it or not, um, it was formed by uh, phone freaking pirates that um, wanted to like you know kind of screw over. Uh, Ma Bell, like they've become the now big company, which I think is the, the, the circle of life Simba. But, you know, there was a time when um, they were the underdog and that's how they thought about things and like, how can we like work around stuff? And I think that's really important to hold that spirit. So that's why we'll keep trying to get into mischief. We'll make mistakes sometimes. I'll end up apologizing for things because I like pranks. Um, but I think um, it, you get a little glimpse of it once in a while. And, and as the story of Apple continues to be told. Some of these stories you don't really hear, so I thought this was a fun clip. So that's our retro for this week. I'll see you on the other side of the clip. We're gonna bring some great stuff to market over together. So, let's take a look at, uh, at this market and how big it is. My clicker's not working. <laughs> oh, there it is, maybe it is working. So how big is this market? Well, let's take a look. No. All righty. Clicker is not working. All right. They're scrambling backstage right now.
You know, when I was in high school, <laughs> Steve Wozniak and I, mostly Steve, uh, made this little device called a TV jammer. And it was this, it was this little oscillator that would put out frequencies that would screw up the TV. And Woz would have it in his pocket. And we'd go into like a dorm at Berkeley where he was going to school. And a bunch of folks would be watching like Star Trek. And he'd screw up the TV. And somebody would go up to fix it. And, and, it, and just as they had their foot off the ground, he'd turn it back on. <laughs> and if they put their foot back on the ground, he'd, he'd screw up the TV again. And within five minutes, he'd have somebody like this <laughs> for the rest of the Star Trek episode. OK, so maybe it's working now. Maybe they're going to have to click them for me. And that's Retro Tech for this week.